Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Soul Pet. This is the channel that's dedicated to helping people heal from and recover from the grief after the loss of a pet. My name is Elaine, and I'm an animal Reiki master and an animal chaplain. And I like to offer messages of hope and healing for people who are going through the grief after pet loss. And I like to share stories. I like to offer suggestions for how we can heal. And together, I believe, I truly honestly believe in the certainty of your healing. I know that this is something that we can all do together. This is a beautiful community of people who support each other. And I have been through loss myself. You know that I've lost three seniors, three seniors all. And that's those are just the most recent beautiful animal companions that have crossed. Uh, and so I like to share stories and I like to help offer support for what you're going through. Today's topic is about forgiveness. Now, it may not be what you think, but we are going to talk about forgiveness. And why are we going to talk about forgiveness? Because one of the things that keeps us feeling separated from our animal companions on the other side is anger. I truly believe after all of the animals that I've worked with as an animal chaplain and Reiki master, and my own beautiful Lucy is the one who inspired this when she crossed to the other side, I know that we remain connected. I know that death is not the end. I know that their passing is not the end for us. And I understand the depth of your grief. Anger is one of the things that keeps us separated from them. I want you to be able to feel that connection with them again. I want you to receive the signs you're looking for, that they are on the other side, that they are still with you, that they support you, that they're your little guardian angel. And we'll talk more about signs in another video. Um, but one of the things that we need to, that I suggest, I recommend, we get past is anger. And we do that through forgiveness. And I'll use two examples. Now, the first example, for some of you who have followed this channel for a while, you know I do live streams every Monday, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, there's an animal companion of mine that I rarely mention, and I will probably, at least at this moment in time, not ever tell her full story. It is still very, very tender, even though it's been a dozen years. It is still very, very um, there's something in my heart that is still not right. And the, the circumstances surrounding her passing were, um, it, it was not, it was not good for me. You can even hear it in my voice. It was a very difficult time and a lot of self forgiveness was and is needed. I work on this all the time with myself. So I will mention the beautiful Bailey. Bailey, um, was an amazing, an amazing creature. She was the most beautiful girl. She was a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and uh, and I won't tell you her story, but just know that I loved her and love her with all my heart, and I still work on my own self forgiveness. So without I, with that story set aside, um, I'll tell another story, and this is of the beautiful Murphy and Murphy, and that none of these stories are meant to hurt your heart because they all have beautiful, wonderful endings when our animal companions reach out to us from the other side to let us know that all is forgiven on the other side. No animal takes anything with them. They don't hold grudges. They don't take anything with them that isn't pure, positive love. All they take with them is their love for us. And they are our partners in life and they remain our partners after they pass. So um, Murphy, as I, I'll briefly give you the little story of Murphy because again, I don't want to hurt anybody's heart. Murphy was a senior doggy, uh, a beautiful senior who fell asleep. I'll put it this way. This is the perfect way to put it. Fell asleep in the sun in the garage. I'll put it that way. <laughs> fell asleep as the sun was shining in the garage behind the vehicle in the garage and Murphy passed. And I'll, I'll let you draw your own conclusions about how Murphy passed. But the result of Murphy's passing is that his human um, held themselves responsible even though every animal crosses under their own terms, that's a topic for another day, um, I would do the same. I would feel incredibly responsible for the way that my animal crossed. And I know that many of you feel this way. You feel that you should have done something different, could have done something different, would have done something different. Perhaps it was with their medical care. Perhaps it was a mistake. Perhaps a door was left open and a cat ran outside. Um, there are any number of reasons why we hold ourselves responsible for the way that our animal crossed. 
And that more than anything, more than anything else, even though I would say there's anger for, for other situations, there might be anger for a veterinarian, we might be angry with a spouse, we might be angry with a child, we might be angry with our own animal companion for crossing, um, as I was when Winston crossed without me being present. We might be angry. Um, we might be angry at our pet for crossing. We might be angry at God for taking that pet from us. And I don't believe that that happens. I don't think that's the way it happens, but I know that's what we think. Um, and so those things all cause anger. But I think the thing we'll focus on today is self-forgiveness. Anger at yourself for something you did or didn't do um, and for something that you would have. And if you had the chance again to do differently, you would. So this forgiveness act, um, activity that I'm going to share with you, you may have heard, for those of you who watched my channel before, I know you've heard, and that is Ho'oponopono. And I am going to recommend this little book, um, the book of Ho'oponopono, but you can find many videos. Um, YouTube is a wonderful place. You can find, um, can be a wonderful place. You can find many videos of people who uh, explain Ho'oponopono. It's a Hawaiian practice. And I say the word now, I've said it so many times, Ho'oponopono, like Hawaii. Ho opono pono. And the words mean to make is ho, and pono means right with nature. And when you say a word twice in the Hawaiian language, it means you're you're emphasizing it. You're not just giving it double strength. You are you're giving it all the strength you possibly can. So ho opono pono, the word means to make doubly right, to make truly right with nature. And there are people who have tried to translate it. There's no real translation from Hawaiian to English. Uh, but the translation that we've come closest to, it actually takes like five phrases for one little word. Ho'oponopono carries so much meaning. It means, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. That's four phrases. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. And you can say them in any order. It, those are That's the spirit behind the phrase ho'oponopono. And I say it, so when I... When I'm feeling particular guilt still over the situation with Bailey, I go into Ho'oponopono. It helps me find relief. It helps me raise myself above the guilt that keeps me, because guilt will keep us mired just as much as anger, but it helps me release that. So for self-forgiveness, when you are angry with yourself, this is what you say. Say this along with me if you can. If you're driving, wait until you get to a safe place. Um, but say this along with me if you can with your eyes closed. I always like to bring my hands into prayer position. This is called gasho in the Hindu tradition, uh, in the Reiki tradition. Um, we bring our hands into prayer position, but you can simply put your hands on your heart or you can just rest your hands in your lap, but however you're comfortable. And just say these few words with me a couple of times. Take a nice deep breath. Breathing resets all of our, all of our parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah, that place that makes us feel relief that thing that is not flight or fright, that thing that is calm, peace, relax. That's where we want to get with our breath. Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I am so sorry. I ask your forgiveness. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the forgiveness. I love you. I love you. Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And feel with each time that you say that, your heart gets a little lighter. And think of yourself, and if you have the courage, and if you're in a place where you can, it can be later, open your eyes, and if you have the courage, stand in front of a mirror and say to yourself, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you, Ho Ho'oponopono, your animal companion says there's nothing to forgive. They have, they have not only forgiven you, but they didn't take anything like that with them. They took only your love to the other side. You are forgiven. And now it's time to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And it's that easy. Feel the lightness in your heart. 
Do it as often as you choose. I do this so often. I don't ever stop doing it. It's a beautiful thing for any practice, not just for our animal companions who have crossed to the other side. There could be any number of situations where you could use Ho'oponopono. But for now, um, we use it for our animal companions and to help us heal after, the, after their passing. Okay, so what I want to close with is a couple of things. I want to remind you that every Monday night, it is uh, 6 p.m. my time, which is Denver. So that's eight o'clock on the East Coast. I do a live stream and we all come together and we go a little deeper in terms of spirituality. I call it hairy fairy, hairy for our little animal companions, our little fur babies, even though some of them have fins and feathers. Uh, we do a live stream and we do go down the rabbit hole. We talk some spiritual things. We talk about signs. We talk about forgiveness. We talk about healing. We talk about all kinds of things, but it is a community of people who come together in support of each other. We have all experienced pet loss in one form or another, sometimes traumatic, sometimes natural, sometimes assisted, whatever it may be, we come together to hold space for each other and to really help each other rise and heal. Um, I also have two guides. I'm working on a third one uh, that is specifically directed at um, overcoming some, some things for helping us through grief. But for those of you whose pet may still be with you and you are um, perhaps have received a terminal diagnosis or um, they're aging or approaching end of life, we do have a guide for anticipatory grief. There's a guide for how to make difficult decisions for your animal companion as they approach end of life. So those I put in the description of the video uh, and I'll let you know as soon as the third one is released. But otherwise, I hope you'll join us on Monday nights. It's a wonderful community of people so supportive of each other. I couldn't be more happy with all of the folks who have, who join the live streams and the, and the sharing that we do. And lastly, oh, I'm supposed to say this. If you would please subscribe and click the little bell, if you'd like uh, notifications, right? Someday I'll be a, a real YouTuber, <laughs> but, but for now, until then, may animals light your way. I'll see you soon. Take care.